Hi guys, welcome to Gene Expression and Cancer. You need to be able to look at the differences between two types of tumor. You need to be able to explain the role of oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes in the development of tumor. Explain the effects of abnormal methylation and of tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes. And explain how increased estrogen levels can cause breast cancer. So this is our uh, specification. So that meets our learning objectives. So what is the cancer? So of course, cancer is a group of disease caused by damage to the genes that regulate mitosis and the cell cycle. And it's caused by uncontrolled cell division, uncontrolled mitosis. The highest chance of cancer development is taking place during the S phase of a cell cycle because this is where DNA replicates. So let's have a quick look at the cell cycle. So we've got the interface here, which is made of G1, S and G2 phase. And we've got the cell division here could be mitosis or could be meiosis. So the high chance of cancer development is taking place in the S phase where the DNA is replicated. Okay, so that's what we will be looking at. So in terms of the cell division, there are two genes that uh, control the cell division. So it's a tumor suppressor gene that normally inhibits the cell division. So tell the uh, cell where to stop dividing and proto-oncogenes when they stimulate cell division. So they keep telling the cell to divide. So in normal cycle, the proto-oncogenes, they acting as a gas. So they keep telling cell to stop, uh, to start dividing and to keep dividing. In terms of the tumor suppressor genes, then they're uh, acting as breaks, so they will tell the cell where to stop. So they're working together really well. But when it comes to mutation of those genes, we will then have a high chance of cancer development because what would happen, the proto-oncogenes will constantly telling cells to divide and divide and divide. And then when it comes to the uh, mutation of tumor suppressor gene, they're not going to inhibit the uh, division. There will be no breaks to stop the cell division. So let's have a quick recap on the uh, gene expression. How does it work? So if the gene is expressed, the process of transcription can take place and the protein can be synthesized. So gene expression, okay, what we're looking here at the DNA and histones complex, we've got less condensed DNA and histones complex. So that gene here is expressed. So that means it's switched on. So the transcription of the protein that we are interested in can take place. When the gene is not expressed, the DNA and uh, histones complex, it's more condensed. So this DNA, it's wrap up around the histones so the transcription can uh, cannot take place hence we do not have the protein so let's have a look back to proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes and then let's have a look at the mutations of those so what is a normal function of the proto-oncogenes what we've said before they will tell the cell to divide okay so they stimulate the cell uh, division what is the job, normal job of the tumor suppressor gene? It's to stop the cell division. They can also repair any mistakes in the DNA and they can maintain this normal rate of cell division. So in terms of those genes, what normally they can act as, they can be switched on or off in terms of the proto-oncogenes. So if they are on, they will tell the cell to divide. If they are off, they're obviously not going to do so. And the tumor suppressor gene will act as a break, so will tell the cell uh, to stop dividing. So that's under normal condition. But when it comes to mutation, so to change to the uh, DNA sequence, proto-oncogenes, we will call them then oncogenes, and they will be permanently switched 
on. So what does that mean? That they will constantly tell the cell to divide and divide and divide. So to mutate proton genes, we only need one single mutated allele. Okay. In terms of the tumor suppressor gene, uh, we, we don't t uh, change the name, we just say it's a mutated tumor suppressor gene. And of course, if it's mutated, it does not have its normal jobs. So in terms of mutation, it will no longer be able to inhibit this cell division. So in other words, it will be switched off. So if it's switched off, it's not going to code the proteins that can inhibit cell division. So to mutate the tumor suppressor gene, we need two mutated alleles to inactivate this gene. So um, we will be looking now how the uh, acetylation and methylation affects those uh, affects those genes. So quick recap: acetylation is the addition of acetyl group to histones, and methylation it's addition of methyl group to DNA. So we will work on this table here. So as you can see, the effect of the increased acetylation and decreased methylation, it's the same. What do they do? They make DNA and histones complex less condensed. So the gene is expressed. Same in this situation here. In terms of the decreased acetylation and increased methylation, again, the same, uh, the same effect. So the gene is not expressed because uh, DNA is wrapped up around the histones. The complex is more condensed. So proton genes, okay, if they are expressed, okay, what do we remember? That the gene will be constantly turned on. So that means that uh, oncogenes will tell cells to constantly divide, causing uncontrolled mitosis, causing cancer. In terms of the tumor suppressor gene, if the gene is on because it's expressed, that's absolutely fine because it's normal job. It's to be turned on and to stop cell division. So there is no cancer on that side. Right, then decrease uh, acetylation. The effect is, of course, we've mentioned, it makes the DNA histones complex more condensed, so the gene is off. For proton genes, that's fine. It's not going to cause cancer because it's not going to tell cell to divide. So we don't have any uncontrolled mitosis here. But in terms of the tumor suppressor gene, when it's off, that's a problem because it does not act as a break anymore. So um, that will lead to uncontrolled mitosis, that will lead to cancer. In terms of the increased methylation, the same situation as with decreased acetylation, what we've mentioned before. So increased methylation, addition of the methyl group to DNA, make the complex more condensed. So the genes will be off. Proto-oncogenes being off means not uncontrolled mitosis, but tumor suppressor genes being off means, yes, there is an uncontrolled mitosis, so we're dealing with cancer. And decreased methylation, same effect as increased acetylation. So decreased methylation, it's a removal of methyl group from DNA, so that will make DNA and uh, histones complex less condensed, turning both of the genes on. We know that if proto-oncogene is on, we're dealing with uncontrolled mitosis causing cancer. If the tumor suppressor gene is on, that's absolutely fine because that's its normal job. It's not going to cause cancer. There's no uncontrolled mitosis. Right. So there are differences between two types of tumor, what we've seen in the learning objectives. We've got two cancerous one it's called malignant and non-cancerous one it's called burning so there are few differences between them uh, they both can grow to a really large scale burning tumor grows slower than the malignant tumor the cells are specialized in the benignant tumor but uh, they become an unspecialized in malignant the biggest difference between them is the fact that the malignant tumor can spread. 
and we call this process of uh, spreading metastasis. So if spread from one location to the other location, it will then call, uh, cause the secondary tumor. Well, benignant tumor stays with 